Africa has a lot of wind and a lot of sun. It also has a lot of hydropower, uh, but it's dispersed around the continent. And in a way, this is, this is good news uh, in terms of uh, establishing um, big, big grids. Uh, from, from what we saw today, uh, uh, wind power uh, varies sub very substantially with just the, the amount of wind, and wind velocity uh, moves around quite a lot. Uh, the same will happen with, with solar. Obviously, solar is, is less effective at night, uh, but with cloud cover and so forth, solar power drops uh, considerably. Uh, so this variability in output, and uh, uh, you don't get supply necessarily when you want it. Actually, you just get supply whenever the wind blows and when the, when the sun shines, uh, means that you have difficulties matching supply with, with demand. And there's a couple of ways um, to deal with this. The first is to simply expand the space over which you're capturing wind and solar. And if, if your space becomes large and you have lots of uh, wind power sources and solar power sources contributing to, the, to a big grid, then there's a sort of portfolio effect that you get and, uh, and your total contribution to the grid becomes relatively much more stable. Uh, as a consequence, uh, you can you can use so across bigger grids uh, there there's a greater avail, uh, ability to to uh, accommodate this variation that you have in renewable energy supplies and it's it's you know uh, uh, very significant uh, the other thing you can do uh, is with with hydropower hydropower is a relatively inexpensive uh, source of power there are concerns on environment and and other uh, items, uh, you know, hydropower does not have, it's not all advantages, there's disadvantages to hydropower as well. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there's very substantial hydropower resources located on the Nile, located in the Democratic Republic of Congo, located in southern Africa on the, on the Zambezi. Uh, one of the things that we've been able to show, and this has also been shown in Kenya, is that hydropower paired with renewables uh, can make the two much more effective in terms of dispatchability because hydropower, especially if the dams are designed to do this, uh, can you can effectively use the dam as a, as a free battery in a sense. So if you have uh, a lot of wind and a lot of solar uh, coming uh, at a particular time, uh, you simply turn off your turbines and you allow water to pile up behind the dams. If it's nighttime and not windy and lots of people's lights are on, then you have to turn on the turbines and, and the water flows through. Uh, so you get the power and, uh, at, at the right time. And so this, when they're combined and combined properly, while respecting flow constraints, um, you can do this. Uh, the, the other big advantage uh, to having a big grid is, is it's much, much easier to, to respect environmental constraints on river flow because you can turn off a turbine on the Zambezi, then you can turn off a turbine on the Congo, then you can turn one off on the Nile, and if, if you're working across a large number of dams, uh, then you can, you can manage these flows in principle much, much more simply. Uh, so that's one area where we're looking in the African energy futures. And the idea is basically to come up with, okay, what are the potential gains for uh, uh, from a, a, a root, uh, strategy rooted in hydropower and supplemented with renewables, largely for big power concentration users, big cities, Johannesburg, Lagos, these kinds of places. A different strategy is likely to be in place in rural areas. Uh, this is where, uh, uh, you know, in, in more diffuse zones, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to link all of these to the grid. So, so microgrids, uh, some kind of potentially solar power, other, other solutions are, are in play, and we're looking at that uh, as well. Well, a lot of people worry about that. The cost of, for example, um, Grandinga is, is around $80 billion. And people look at that and say, oh, you know, where are we going to find $80 billion for this? But the fact of the matter is you're going to invest way more than $80 billion uh, on power. The, the question is not, 
are we going to invest a lot of money in, in power production? We are. The question is, where do we invest these, these power uh, systems? What's the most efficient way uh, to, to do that? Uh, so, so I think that, that's correct. Now, in terms of getting these big grids to, to function, that is obviously a political economy issue. Um, but if we never, if we never know what the benefits of a pan-African grid are, then obviously only the political conditions are going to apply. There is no economy to the, uh, there's just sort of a notional benefit uh, to having a big grid, but we don't know exactly uh, what, what that might be. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that I think is, is our goal, is really to sort of uh, have a, fair, a fairly stylized approach, just not grand detail, but what are the, the potential benefits to, to a large grid? The other, the other, you know, the fact of the matter is um, there aren't that many very, very large concentrations of hydropower. There's three. Nor there aren't that many very, very large concentrations of electricity demand. South Africa and Nigeria are the, are the two biggest there, and there, there are others. So uh, you actually, you don't need to coordinate across every African state. You only need to coordinate across a relatively few. Nobody's done this before. Um, so far as I know, uh, hydropower, you know, prior to concerns about greenhouse gas emissions, uh, is a very inexpensive, once you've built it and you have the water behind, it's a very mar low marginal cost source of power. You don't have to burn anything. So the idea generally as utilities have run, is that hydropower has formed what's called base load. So hydropower, they more or less have been running it uh, and, and providing to the grid because this is one of the cheap, if you own a hydropower plant, uh, the marginal cost of providing power via, via the hydropower system is, is, is very, very low. And so uh, there aren't very many places or that, that have tried to use these systems in order to improve uh, what they call dispatchability and, and, and basically meeting supply. Uh, with demand, so 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 this is new. Um, the Grandinga is is also new. This is a very very large potential project. People have been talking about it for for some time, uh, but the scale is is quite large. Uh, so thinking about that in the African context is very new. Uh, Grandinga provide has big challenges. The biggest challenge probably is in, in the um, transmission. Uh, distribution uh, and, and how you handle that and how you do it in a way that's not vulnerable, excessively vulnerable to sabotage or, or, or other uh, political instabilities. MIT is a, a useful partner uh, for this. Uh, we're working uh, with the Joint Program for Global Change. Um, they have a lot. Of, we've done a lot of work together uh, on the climate change side. Uh, so, for example, one of the concerns under energy futures is: um, Are these basins going to dry up? So, would we invest a lot of uh, resources into hydropower production, and then we don't get the precipitation necessary to fill up the dams, and we, and we don't produce the power? Uh, so, that's that's one thing uh, we'll be able to look at. Um, we have uh, them looking or working to pull together the big grids. Uh, uh, study the, the, the full thing. Uh, there's the, the linkages between renewables and, and hydropower uh, production, which will also go into this big grid approach. And then we're looking at some specific power pools, Southern Africa power pool being one. Um, we'll be doing, I think, uh, we've done some work on the Nile just in terms of, of what's going on in terms of the hydropower, hydropower production. Uh, we'll be looking much more at the economics of the Nile over the next uh, uh, few months. And this is, this is you know, very, very good uh, UN kind of project because you have, the, you know, a, a very high level of tension uh, between Egypt 
and, and Ethiopia with respect to, um, to the dams. But in principle, you also have uh, or have the possibility of, of a considerable amount of, of, of benefits uh, from, from collaboration. And, and once again, um, similar to looking at the whole, whole big grid, uh, the politicians can look at this and say, ah, you know, we don't want to do that. Um, but uh, it's nice if there is a reasonable uh, estimate of how much is being left on the table as a consequence of pursuing a narrower uh, national interest as opposed to some kind of, of collaboration. Mm -hmm.